Hello everyone! Welcome to the magic of human beings. I'm Carol Cristina da Silva, your host, theatre maker, actress, puppeteer, voiceover artist. The magic of human being was created to share great stories. I decided to have conversations with people that I love, respect and are truly inspiring and to get glimpses of their journey, to know how they do what they do, how they've been making their lives. And I want to share their stories about change, challenge, transformation, and connect with one another in a human level. Today's guest, we met through very interesting circumstances. It was very funny. And I wanted to start by a quote by Maya Angelou that it says, If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. Maya Angelou, my goodness, isn't she great? Today's guest is Chris Willow. He's a fantastic song singer and songwriter. And I'm not going to tell you much more because I'm going to invite him. Chris, I sent, just sent him an invitation. Let's see if it worked. Hello. Hi! <laughs> Hello. How is the volume for you? Good. Good? Can you... Hang on. This is my first time on Instagram Live. Ah, welcome, Chris. I had, to, I had to install Instagram quickly for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you? I'm well. I'm, it's nice to be here. It's cool. I see people joining that I know. That's cool. Thanks for having me. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for being here. Of course. Nice haircut. Everyone always says this, but it, it keeps changing. <laughs> It Where keeps changing, it? like, like there's been one haircut, but it dries differently, like, every day. <laughs> and then people keep saying that I, there's been a change. But, but um, thanks, I'll take it. Uh, but did you have yourself, did you, how? What's that? How do you have a new haircut? Did you have it cut to yourself? Um, your... my, a, a bit of both. So basically, I was cutting the back <laughs> by myself a bit. And then my my wife Amy recently improved it. Oh, great job, Amy! Yes, thank you, Amy. So, but yeah, that's I think that's one thing that when everything opens up, I think there's going to be a lot of people having haircuts. Yeah, I need one too. The ends of my hair they're getting quite dry, like the end. So, uh, you always look great, sir. So oh, thank you. Fun. But with long hair as well, it's easier to cut. You just need to... I think so. This is, this is curly heads every day. Every day is a different animal. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, Chris, um, normally I start by asking, like, about your background. And, uh, but I wonder, shall we go via background or shall we start by how we met each other what, whatever you prefer whatever you want to do I'm oh, oh this is, okay okay let's start with your background and then we come to okay okay so i am from cape town south africa originally and um both my parents were musicians when i was growing up and so music was the family trade, basically. It was, it was the thing. So you, we learned musical instruments as part of life, really, you know. Um, I learned the cello and um, my sister learned the piano. And um, 
it was quite strange because I don't think my parents wanted either of us to be musicians. They, but that was their field. So they used that to teach us about hard work and about life. And, you know, it's kind of, but I don't think they wanted us to, um, to make a career out of it because it can be difficult, you know? Uh, yeah. So then I, um, but my sister and I started out the same, but we, we such different people and different brains that she really excelled in the classical music world. And I, I just never really clicked with it the same. And then it was only when I was about, I guess, I don't know, 11 or 12 that I started to understand the concept of writing your own music. And, you know, that's when things, everything changed. And I started playing bass and I started playing guitar and I got into bands like uh, Pink Floyd is my favorite band. And um, so when I got into that stuff, it was like, you know, the concept that you could write a song that didn't exist and now it exists is that was, I couldn't believe that idea, you know, that I could, uh, I could sit down for an hour and afterwards there's, there's a new thing that exists that other people can enjoy or not enjoy <laughs> for, for the rest of time, you know, and which is such a weird, uh, really cool thing. You know? So that's, that's been my passion ever since. And then I, so it was songwriting and then guitar playing, which is the, the two things because, um, you know, it's something about doing something that you've chosen to do is different from the thing that the family does. And yeah. it was different and it was different enough, but similar enough that I could get, you know, my family uh, supported me in doing it, even if they didn't necessarily understand the nuance of my field compared to their field. The fact that I was playing guitar and practicing hard was good for them. <laughs> <laughs> and how, what is the difference uh, between you, you and your sister? She's very, very good at, at... Oh, sorry, the, the difference between age. <laughs> between age, okay, okay. So how like... Age, we're two years apart, so she's two years younger than me. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, when we started playing those, we started playing they're called I Steadfords. It's a Welsh word, which they use in South Africa. I don't think they use it here, but it's basically like a little, uh, it's, it's a competition for the arts. So you'd go and play this I Steadford and that I Steadford, and there'll be different categories. There'd be sight reading, there'd be um, different age groups. And my sister would go there, it was all classical. And like, she would just clean up. She'd like win everything. And then, so I was aware quite early on that you know, my little sister, has got that thing down sure. more than more than me, um, but yeah. So that's two years age difference. Cool. Yeah. She's, and that's, she, uh -huh. she's in New York now. She lives in in New York, and mm -hmm. she's at Juilliard, which is cool. And then from your songwriting and guitar, that was what really changed. I mean, it was almost like it wasn't that I got, it wasn't that something new happened in me. It was that, it was that I discovered a way to get what was in me out for the first time, yeah. if you know what I mean. So it's like, I'd always had these feelings. I, I engaged with music and creativity in a certain way and playing the cello in a classical context wasn't, giving me the right infrastructure to to get that out you know and and it was when i when i the, just the concept that you could make something up and play it was amazing and i think ever since then it became just part of my practice my day my life you know so it's, it's kind of it's not really dependent on whether or not i i'm going to release a song or not i just write songs all the time no it's just part of my it's part of how i um, process things it's your vehicle for expression yeah. thing even if no one else hears it you know so most of my i've written and that's kind of what this recent life change you know kind of started again in many ways has been to try and work out is there a way that i can do that and share it with others because um you know lots of people know me as somebody who performs and does share music with others but the vast majority of things that I've ever written and recorded, no one's ever heard. I just put them on a hard drive and I move on. 
because the, they, they've served their initial purpose just by being written. But, but now I want to try and learn how to share it better with others. Oh, wow. So geek. It's, you, could, you have all these creative things that you've been doing and it's there somewhere. Which, which Chris, that brings me then to how you met because not many people knew about what you've done. Mm. Of how we I've, met. Tried, I've kept it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yes. Do you want to tell the story? Well, because it was incredible because it came out. So Chris, we got back in touch because he's doing a, a Chris Willow show, which is a podcast on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you say like, it's a place to uh, share with the artists, talk to friends and also meet new people. Yeah. So I love that. And uh, we got like you, got in touch with me saying what you're doing and I was starting with the magic of human beings and I said yes I would love to be there yeah and it was through being there which later I'm gonna put it out there the link because you guys have to watch because I was just watching re-watching because we are gonna talk and I was <laughs> laughing <laughs> it's, wow it's great fun and uh, so yeah so there I knew more about was revealed to me what how the trembles come came to be yes um so do you want to tell the story how we met yes so i um you know it's kind of weird like i'm a bit i'm slightly and i've changed i'm trying to let it go a bit but i'm a bit i'm slightly like one of those people that if something seems like a really bad idea or it's a really crazy idea and then people think oh you'll never do that then i really want to do it <laughs> you know And so it started out like as a small little thing, fun, you know, because I liked Star Wars, especially at the time, you know, I was quite excited because the new movies were coming out and stuff. And the people I was living with, it was kind of like almost like an in-joke. We were all um, excited together. And it was um, a friend of mine was booking bands to play at a festival. And for some reason, I don't know what it is, but like I had got in my mind that playing festivals is what you have to do. Like as a musician, that is what you got to do. And then I was like, I want to play the festival, but he wanted something more like novelty for the program. He didn't just want me to play or anyone to play just normal songs. So he basically came up with the idea that maybe I should do, do a full Star Wars <laughs> set. Um, and then I had to write all the material to do it. Um, So I was consulting my kids from when I was young, sort of those old visual dictionaries and writing about the different characters and stuff. And it was a really fun thing to do, to produce an album that's like in universe. And the idea was, was to do a Star Wars version of the gorillas really. So it's like a virtual band that doesn't exist that almost like the band you would encounter in a movie or something. And then they, they happen to have a whole bunch of songs that are about the universe. And it was really fun because, uh, you know, my creative practice is very much, there's a lot of introspection and it's often very personal. And this was not at all like that. This was just a fun opportunity. It's almost like, like working on a TV show or something where the stories are there and I just got to go and use my skills to make them happen. And it was just a, also like a great opportunity to, um, to create in a new way. Like I'm just, I learn by doing. So um, even if it's a project that seems so strange and random, I would work on my music production technique or work on mixing skills. Or I, I always want to be learning new stuff and doing projects is the easiest way for me, for me to do that. So yeah, long story short, I developed a full length Star Wars in universe Star Wars album to play one show. <laughs> <laughs> I played one show in Brilliant. disguise um, and then never played it again. And that was it. And, and then. But the only time you played, I was there. Yeah. It's the only time ever. Oh, unbelievable. Because so then I was there watching and and the whole gear that you guys were wearing it. I thought this is incredible. 
and then after the concert finished i was there with my friends you knew some yeah. of my friends and we got talking and then i said yes i was in star wars and you're like oh really <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing it was like there was like almost no one there it's like such a classic musician thing to do it's like to like put your whole life on hold for like a few months to create a whole separate album just to do one show is almost no one there and what are the chances that one of the people there happened to be in Seoul <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was yeah. so funny because I loved the CD and I didn't have any cash and there were CDs for sales. And I was like, oh, shall we do a swap? Like, I can I've send got it. it here. I can, yeah. And uh, you said to me that you will give me an action figure of yourself. Yes. And I got this CD and look, and I send the action figure. It's so cool. And, um, yeah, I think you're the only person I've ever met that has an action figure of themselves. That have, I'm sorry, have some what? Ha have their own action figure. You're the only <laughs> person I've ever met. <laughs> I know, that is cool. And this, I told you actually on when you interviewed me that this, it's, I love this. Because when I have all, uh, when I receive, uh, I have contracts where they send me for tops, uh, cards, for yeah. Uh, signatures on autographs. So sometimes I've signed quite a few. So what I do is I put this on and I'm like, Obi Wan. <laughs> na, na, na. <laughs> and I'm transported to the galaxy. So yeah. how about that? Yeah, I think, you know what? I think it's so, something that's so amazing. In many ways, there have been a lot of difficulties produced by. Um, the internet for musicians, you know, it's been very difficult in many ways, but one of the most amazing things is that one thing, like if that had happened in the, in the nineties or something, it would have been that one show that I played for my friend for fun and no one would have ever heard about it again. But just the fact that for free, basically, or for almost nothing, you can distribute uh, music online to the whole world. It's so cool that, that you know, a musician or someone can make something in a short period of time and basically forget about it, but everyone else can enjoy that for the rest of time. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's, and I think that's something about recorded music that going back to my childhood, that when I, when I understood that concept, it was a huge event for me to understand that um, you can make a recording at one moment in time and then for the rest of time, people can be transported back into that world, wow. you know. Yes, but it was a, such a cool, such a cool thing to meet you. You're just one of the most epic people I've ever met. <laughs> uh, well, for me as well, it was fantastic because especially having like this CD and how, because when we talked again and you're like, what, you've been listening all this time? <laughs> I know the songs. <laughs> You know, that's, it makes it, the, the fact that you have enjoyed it is, may, may, makes it completely worth it. Like that's, even if you were the only person that ever listened to it, but I, I think maybe others have, I, I'm not, you don't know, you know, but um, it's, it's made it, made it worth it, you know, well, as long as it can bring joy. That's well, yesterday there was already a Star Wars follower, a Jedi, who already said, oh, I went there to the, and I downloaded it. I downloaded it. <laughs> uh, there we go. So it's, we, we put things out there and we don't know. We, yeah. That's the magic of great. You did that thing for that one show, but also because you can keep it off. Yeah. We don't know in the future what ripples, what will happen. I thought it would be really fun I mean, I don't know. I don't know anyone from Lucasfilm or Disney. I'm not in that world, but it would be interesting if they. I can imagine these songs or this sort of thing being used for like a, a, a Star Wars kids computer game, like a Lego game or something, where there's like a cantina band, almost like Guitar Hero or something, but where you play the, the you know the band and you have to sing the songs like karaoke or something. I don't know, but um, I don't know much about computer games or anything. But yeah, I think it could work for something like that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, so, then, when did you move to London? I've moved here twice. 
um, <laughs> you, like, like many people, you know, you move here and then it all falls apart and then you leave and then you come back <laughs> for, for a second attempt. So I, I moved here in September of 2006 for the first time for 12, until 2012, end of 2012. So I was here for six years and I was a student and, and did all that sort of stuff. But eventually I just ran out of visa options. Like I actually was, I was forced to leave. But one second, were you studying music? I was studying music, yes. Ah, okay. Um, so I, it was, it was a horrible experience because you know, your whole life is here after six years and then I had to leave, I had no choice. Um, so I went back to South Africa and I was there for maybe three years in Cape Town and uh, I ended up getting married and my wife um, coincidentally happened to have a Portuguese passport. So we moved, she's a Portuguese citizen, so we moved back um, under the EU law, which now doesn't, you know, yep. thank goodness we came soon enough. Um, yeah, and that was in 2015, August. So I've been here since 2015. Ah. For the second time. I love London. I love it so much. Yeah, me too. What do you love about London? Just like meeting people like you, for example. It's, it's, it's surprisingly normal to meet um, people from, well, not surprisingly, but you meet people from all around the world who have all come here for some um, reason, you know, so you just meet all walks of life here, which I, I love. It's very diverse and you never are short of inspiration. You know, there's always somebody to meet to inspire you in, in some way. And um, just also, it's, it's quite like a, um, it's actually quite a caring society. Uh, people give London a hard time, you know, and say it's unfriendly, but I think it's a very caring society, you know, with the public parks and everything and the you know, the, the policemen are friendly, you know, in other countries are scared, you <laughs> run away. I just think it's quite a, I mean, they seem friendly from my experience. I'm sure that other people might have other experiences, but in, in general, it's been, I think it's a friendly place. Yeah, yeah. I love it too. The same reasons, like the diversity, you find people from everywhere and, uh, getting together you just can't be you can't be weird here which i like you know it's like <laughs> i was i was always the weird guy i was always the guy like doing these you know with these crazy ideas for creative projects and i was just you know always writing my song i was never the guy who's gonna get the you know go get a real job and give up on the music or whatever and here that's quite normal and i'm not you know so i, I just was it was it's a relief almost to be in a place where they where i'm I'm not that odd. <laughs> Chris, what you said is just spot on because exactly like we talk about friends and that's, that's it. London, there is, it's a space for everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Like in Brazil, the same, like the clothes that wear, how they will always say, oh, you're not from here, are you? And I was like, yes, I am. I'm Brazilian. <laughs> but coming to London, you just melt in. Like you can walk with whatever pineapple in your head, anything. There is no like third glances, might yeah. be, but that's. And I think for a lot of people who move to London, that's, that's, that's a, at first it's not nice for them because they feel so insignificant. At first, like London doesn't care about you. You're just like, you're just one of everyone, get on with it. And at first that could be quite difficult for people because it, it feels like they're being ignored almost because there's just so much, but then actually this, when you realize that there's amazing freedom in that, it's just that it's not that you're, that people are ignoring you. It's just that they aren't noticing that you're different or whatever. You just are one of the people, you know. You are one of the people. You are one of the humans. Exactly. <laughs> and, it, and it affects how I think. I think like very open when I'm here. I, I just, I feel, I think in a, you know, in an anything is possible kind of way. You know what I mean? Oh, everything is It's in the air. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah true. And uh, what I was gonna, 
what about the supermarine dream? Yes, so that, so I was doing something, I mean, it's like the last few years have been a bit of a artistic, just chaos. Like it's been so many different projects and identities, like who am I, what the hell's going on, what even is my name, you know? There was a stage where I didn't even want to socialize because I didn't know what to say my name was to people. <laughs> it, was, it was that bad. It's like I got so deep into what am I doing because I'd followed a particular path. Um, I don't even know if you've heard any of the stuff under a different name for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just sort of that the pain of realizing that it, maybe that particular phase of my life was over. And, and so, so the Submarine Dream album w was a great way for me to transition out of that because I used the name Lava Kiss, so it was anonymous, kind of, it wasn't like my name and, and it, it was, you know, the, the kind of artwork didn't have any pictures of me, it was just this sort of uh, artwork. Yeah, because I read, and I read that, that you said space to rediscover myself creatively. Yes, exactly. So I just, I needed to just take a step back and like, you know, what is Lava Kiss? Is it a band? Is it, who is this? It, it, what, when meanwhile, it's just me again, <laughs> doing the, doing the, doing it. But um, that album has kind of mock, was a transition for me from where I was to where I'm going. Okay. Um, and I might re-release it in a year or two as a Chris Willow album, fine. You know, I might do that. But I just needed that space. I needed a space where it was almost this, this uh, neutral ground where it's, it's not my identity. You know, it's a typical artistic sort of struggles. Who am I? You know, all that stuff. And so all those songs were written more outward. Than, there's some inward, but a lot of it's about stuff rather than personal. So it was about um, our relationship to the ocean and different um, environmental concerns and... And then when I did talk about myself, I would do so in, in, in a highly metaphorical way that maybe it wasn't as obvious, you know. But yeah, so that album, Submarine Dream, is available on um, Spotify and everything. And uh, it was actually a crowdfunded. So I did a crowdfunding campaign and um, people contributed and helped me make that. And that was right at the beginning of the very first lockdown in so like a year ago. Okay. So it was, it, it, it was just really great for me because it gave me something when everyone else was, and I lost all my work because all, all my income came from live performance uh -huh. guitar. So it was such a blessing to have a project that, the, that was crowdfunded, that, la that money lasted me like the first two months or three months of lockdown. And I just had this project to do. Um, so it was only kind of in June that I was like, realized what lockdown was because <laughs> I was so busy on that. Yeah, so Submarine Dream, I'm really happy with the way that album turned out. And, and um, I, I, what I read something about it that you wrote that I thought was fantastic was in, I am highly moved by the plight of the ocean and its inhabitants and have drawn great inspiration from them. While this is a music album and not some new protective legend legislation or plastic reducing invention it is still my hope to bring more attention to the ocean in the way i best know how through songs I uh, thanks for reading that i think yeah i think that's that's quite an important statement for me because i think that often musicians seem like, I'm not a politician. I don't know what's best. I don't know how to, you know, and I, so I'm not going to pretend to know what the solutions are. Um, I've, you know, I'll have some thoughts as to what I think they are, but I'm not a scientist or like, what am I? What can I, well, I'm just me, I'm Chris, but what, what can I do to just to help? And so I got to, I think people sometimes feel powerless, um, but actually, as a human, you have a voice and you don't even have to say, we should do this. You can just say, look at this, <laughs> you know, and then all of our minds can work out what to do. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, I just think I wanted to make it clear that it's not like, it's not 
trying to be overly condemning or preachy to any individuals yeah. or anything like that, you know? No, I think it's spot on and fantastic. You, it's something that, that you're concerned, that you love, and you, you share that through the love of what you do through your songs. Mm. Yeah, and I think that for me, the songwriting and stuff is is just like a holistic part of what I do. You know, it's kind of it's 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 my conversation with myself and with you know this this the higher power or the spiritual realm or whatever religious words you want to use. Wondering, but for me, yeah, the universe, the core. For me, it's kind of it's it's part of my religious practice, basically. Essentially, it is to write the songs. You know, so um, yeah. It sounds weird to some people. No, I think it sounds beautiful. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> saying about that, like it's your way of communicating, it makes me think of prayer. And now that I say prayer, it makes me think of something, a story that I read oh, yeah. that you found this fish and then the music you created. <laughs> and I heard it and it's so beautiful. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. I do. You know, this is one of those funny things because I told you the other day, like I don't really use, I'm, I'm a bit strange with social media. Like, I don't really like it. So, so I, I'll install it and then I'll share something and I'll delete it. <laughs> um, and, and that happened to be one of the things that I shared. Um, but I completely forgotten about it. And then everyone's like, Oh, I like that new song. And I'm like, what new song? They're like, you know, that peach is song. I'm like, what do you mean? that?" Peach? And then I completely forgot that it just happens to be that it was one of the few things that I've shared. So I think people, noticed it but um yeah so basically the story is that i was i went for a run um in north london here um uh, and there's this valley not this valley, dollars valley brook or something i think it's called but it's like a very very small stream often it's dried up no, not dried up but like this it, it it gets it gets deep when it rains and then it quickly drains so it's always changing you know um and it was quite a dried rocks and stuff there's nothing in there really, you know, maybe you'll see a tadpole once, but for some reason this day at the end of my run, I came back and it was like this big, bright orange koi fish. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what is that? Like, there's no way, I don't even know where it could come from or what happened. And it was, it was stuck on a rock. So, so it was too shallow. So I jumped in quickly and wanted to see what, what, what was up. But um, unfortunately, it looked really damaged and had, had been hurt. So I don't know what happened. Maybe a fox got it from somebody's pond. Mm. Maybe a, a bird of prey got it from a yeah. pond and dropped I don't know. Uh -huh. Who knows? But yeah, so that was, um, it was just such an intense experience because I was just basically coming to like I was trying to save this fish but I don't think I did I don't know but I think it probably didn't make it but so then I would kind of carry it to deeper plots of the water but at first I thought it was okay and then as it went on I started to notice more that it wasn't okay and I saw some like blood came out of its gills it was just so yeah it was just like a moment of trying to spend its last moments with it basically and hold it there because if I if I didn't hold it in the in the water, it would it would like get moved in a bad way, kind of thing. So then I called Amy, my wife, and she ran down to where I was with some packets and stuff, so we could fill the packets up with water and put the fish in to try and could we find could we find somewhere where where there was a pond or like a deep bit of water? And eventually, we found somewhere and put it there. But but um, I it probably didn't make it. But then then that night. It was like, yeah, like you say, prayer. I noticed myself because in the same way with the music, it's like there's always this dialogue for me. And I just noticed myself with the, the fish on my mind. You know, I was basically praying for it, you know, and, and it was just such an uh, interesting experience because, you know, like all these things go, the music and everything, it's always everything is related to everything else for me so then I have that experience that night and then I wake up in the morning and my way of dealing with that experience that night is to quickly write about what happened that night and then I move on uh, you know so I just happened to have Instagram up then and I just played 
what I played. And it was just me saying what I was doing the previous night. So it's almost like my songwriting is like a dear diary. Oh, wow. Thing. Yeah. And then, I, and then I don't think about it again. And then, and then, so what I often do is I record on my phone just voice notes. And then if, you know, when I'm ready to do an album, I go through all of them and, uh -huh. and choose. And it's and interesting because I'll see like a six month period of my life. Where you, where you start to hear that there's a similarity with all of them and clearly I was going through some. But yeah, I can play that for you. I had to quickly go learn it. So. I would love to hear uh, please. And I've, I'll play it on this thing, which you also asked to see. The lute! Yeah. So this is, um, it's actually just a guitar, but it's in the shape of a lute. So it sounds a bit lute-like, but... I got this for free. So somebody said that there, somebody on Gumtree had said weird guitar free. <laughs> <That's what laughs> they, a strange guitar. So I got it for free, and uh, I think it's about a hundred years old, and it's from the 1920s, when um, in Germany some some of the old Renaissance castle music from hundreds of years before became popular again. So guitarists wanted to look more authentic. Uh, but yeah, lucky me. So I'll, I'll, it's, I love it. It's, um, it's very hard to play because the, the strings are so high because it's old and needs some work. It's, it'd be better for shooting arrows, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but um, you, So the reason there's only one little section is because, as I say, it was just Dear Diary and then I move on, you know. And then I just noodle around in between and then sing the section again. But I'll, I'll just play it for you. So we called the, we called the fish peaches because of how it looked. Yeah. I was praying for peaches, praying for grace to the Lord of the breaches and river gates. I was praying for peaches Praying for grace to the Lord of all creatures, please now today. So that's the kind of thing that I do all the time. And then I don't, but I don't even consider it like that I'm trying to write a song. I just do it as a, as a prayer or like a meditation or, sorry, I'm just putting this high, or something like that, you know? Um, so then, then you can repeat then, then lots of snapshots, lots of little, like a diary, lots of. Mm, exactly. And then, and then I'll think about it more and then I'll go back uh, later and um, choose which things to expand. I mean, sometimes I'll write a song, the whole thing is there, fine. But other times I just get, I just get the little, cur the seed down. And then I, I've got that seed and I can, I can later choose to plant it and water it and grow the tree. Um, you know, that's how I ah, think about it. Yes. Like you have this little seed and then it's there, and if you decide it, you can plant it and see what... But sometimes the tree isn't as beautiful as you thought it was going to be. <laughs> you know, so you've got all these seeds, and then you, you, you have faith in the seed, and you plant it, and for some reason, you, you know, it often happens that I just... I'll end up with like 25 songs that I think is for the album, and then I just scrap like 16 of them, because they turned out to not be as good as the seed had suggested they were going to be, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's just part of my 
creative practice or my, my life practice. Really. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, like 25 and then you cut them, it comes to mind uh, when I was listening to your podcast with uh, Amy Watson and you Walton. were helping... What? What? Walton. Walton, not Walton, sorry. She can be Walton, Watson there, I'm sure. Walton. And uh, how you were... You guys were talking how you edit, how you were cutting and cutting. Yeah. So I'd like to, you to tell me uh, about collaborations. Mm, so with wow. collaborations, I um, I think because I'm somebody who writes my own songs and and um, and kind of I understand how personal that feels. If I collaborate with somebody else, I try to respect that process for them. You know, I try not to. It, it's a, it's a balance to learn to for them to learn. If if they've hired me to to help them, for example, then then it takes a while for them to learn that I'm on their side. And if I say that I think something should should go, it's because I I think that it's distraction from what they've told me they are trying to achieve. You know, um, but yeah. So I when I when I collaborate with somebody like Amy. Walton, I mean, usually she sends me, I'll play the guitar and then she'll send me, um, she just records all the vocals at home or whatever and sends it to me. And the first few times was, I think, a shock for her because I just deleted most, <laughs> most of it. Um, but that's just how I work with myself, you know, because I record a lot and then I carve it out, you know. Um, but um, yeah, but I think collaboration is an amazing thing when you, when you once you gain the trust um then it's great you know so amy walton is somebody that you know we have trust she trusts that i have her best interest at heart when i start cutting uh, you know and sometimes i'm wrong you know and then she tells me but there's a give and take you know i mean you know, i'm happy to be wrong most of the time but i think with creativity you can't be too care you must be careful not to be careful because if you're too careful you, you're not stunting precious yeah yeah and you've got to go with your if if you listen to a song the first time or or you listen or for some reason the chorus doesn't excite you like you don't have to convince yourself why you're wrong and why it's actually good just go with your with your gut instinct on things i find you know is the way doing that's the way to go for me um because otherwise, like, it often happens, like, if I think a song is not working of my own, sometimes I'll push through for, like, two months trying to get a recording right, and then, then eventually I scrap it anyway, because I should have known, you know. I was right to, to, so, to doubt the song or whatever. So but, go so, with your gut is a big one. I think so, and I think for creatives it's difficult, because, and I've noticed this with collaboration as well, we all have different people in our head that we're trying to please. Maybe it's mom and dad. Maybe it's the school music teacher. Maybe it's the other people that you think are cool and you wish you could be like them or whatever. And you start serving all these different imaginary things. Think, what will they think? What will they think? What will they think? And actually, I find for creativity, that's not good. You've got to kind of- Oh, no, that sounds, sounds going to disaster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But a lot of people, I'm just going to make this high enough, a lot of people are trapped in that way, you know. Um, you know, myself included, but not, I'm, that's, I'm, deaf, I'm trying to just let things be what they are now. And when I collaborate, I try to understand what the, what the other person wants their thing to be and, and then support that. Yeah. Yeah, listen, you know? well, huh? it's a big part of collaborating. Mm. I find. But I think it's all about being able to hear, not do. I think people um, with music, is, it sounds crazy, but like people who make music don't often listen to their music enough when they're making it. <laughs> they're just doing stuff. Yeah. It's just like, you know, so like if I'm editing some uh, uh, a recording, I don't hear it properly because I can see what I can do to it. But if I 
take that recording, I put it on my, on my phone or something and go sit outside and where I don't have the computer screen, I don't have anything. I hear it more objectively because I'm not trying to change it while I'm listening. Okay. I just, or I go for a walk to the shop and listen to it and then make notes in my head what to change by the time I get home, you know. Yeah, and that for, for me, collaborating as well is fantastic. And it's like the listening of the other because sometimes you already have an idea and that's not collaborating coming already with your idea and trying to impose, like trying to, yeah, let it flow and listen and see what's... It's a real challenge. I think what I've learned is to, it's similar to learning how to take criticism, you know, because like a lot of people when I was younger um, said some things that maybe hardened me. Mm -hmm. They gave me, they were, they were like mean about what I was doing or something. And I felt that they weren't supportive and it, and therefore I would do the opposite of what they said. When, when, when the mature thing is to, is to go, is to, is to, even though they may be being rude, is to go, is there something that they're saying that is based on something that is true and to face that and to go, okay, I see what they're saying. And then you can choose to ignore it, but actually at least hear it. That's what I, you know, that's the, yeah. the journey. Yeah. Because people aren't wrong. If people think, if your song makes somebody sad and you thought it would make them happy, there's nothing you can do about that. Like they aren't wrong for feeling sad when they listen to your song, if you want them to feel happy. You can't force somebody to feel a certain way about what you do. You just have to accept their experience of it. Of is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can just try to, uh, for us, for us, to learn, see how we feel, how we, and also try to, which is hard, but also try to not take things personal. There is another yeah. thing that I learned, it's like, don't take anything personal. As soon as you start doing that, it opens up. <laughs> Everything. It's wonderful. Because then you're like, oh, yeah. this feels fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think <Exactly>. like that. <laughs> what, what have you been doing though recently? So you've got Magic of Human Beings and you said you were doing that. You were looking into reading children's books. Yes, but I haven't started that yet. Okay. Reading kids' books. And maybe we might start some work in school in June. So okay. uh, then we are going to come with a story about the well of the well-being <laughs> so playing ah, the well of the well-being yeah the well of the well-being nice visuals nice visualization that yes and maybe we can go we might create a creation myth with the children about why what happened to the well of well-being that it became sick it's not well anymore okay, so yes. a lot to come out there i love stories yes and chris what's new tell me there is something coming out soon oh uh, yes yeah. so i have an album coming out I, I did kind of a soft release of it last year but i'm going to do a big scale release of it on the i think the 21st of may it's called songs of new beginnings and it's a uh very personal <laughs> collection of songs um, which, and it's just guitar and voice. So, and one of the songs is piano and voice, just this piano here. So it's not, um, it's not a big production. It's the op it, I went the opposite route with this album. So the Submarine Dream album is like a big scale production, lots of layers and sounds. This Songs of New Beginnings is, is very stripped back. It's just about the words and the emotion of the, of the song and it, yeah 21st of june it should come out and i'll do like a launch party or something maybe on my um virtual launch nowadays on my um show oh great and then maybe I mean, maybe in june when things open up i thought of getting so because it's just so simple in terms of the arrangement i could basically do some house concerts or something without 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 any amplification so i might do some some house concerts or find a church or something like that and yeah. if, is anything that you'd like to play for us sure i can play uh, i've got a few options i can play you mentioned that as long as it's possible to yes you like that this is i've never performed this song 
Um, this will be the first time ever. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this for Carol. In the magic of human beings. Magic of human beings, Chris. It's episode 11, and I just realized okay. that I was in your show in episode 11. It's meant to be. Yeah. So, um, if anyone watches my 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 podcast, uh, which is the Chris Willow Show, I know it's, I couldn't didn't come up with a more creative name, but um, it's this little guitar thing is the intro music, so you, you'll recognize it. You can hear me, right? Yes. So okay. First ever performance of that song. Oh, wow. And then too many more, too many more. Yeah. It's a intensely personal song, but I've really got, um, it's quite refreshing to just say things. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know. Um, I guess yeah. it's the process of once you say and you put out there, it's like, woof, let's go, go. Feels good, yeah. 
So that would be my message to anyone who's, who's listening is, you know, feel free to, the truth is the truth, whether or not you admit it. So just let it be, you know, accept it, be at peace with it. Chris, so, yeah. there is some questions that I ask that it's called, it's like, if you have a superpower, what would that be? Mm. <laughs> I don't know, to maybe not worry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to not panic about what people are going to think. To just be. <laughs> maybe there is things to get this power. There is techniques, special things. Yeah. I've heard. You had to get this power. So this is, look, you chose a good one. You might, you, you might master that one. Lucky. I like yeah. the choice. And if you could go in a travel machine, future, past, anywhere, where would that be? Probably London. So I'm already in the right place. Uh, but I'm just in the wrong time. So I would probably go um, to the late 60s and stay here for 10 years. It's sort of, um, you know, they kind of 68 to 73, sort of those five years. Maybe no, I need, I need 75. Let me think. Yeah. As long as, kind of 68 to 75, 76. If I can have it, I'll take 78. But that, that's the, Period. for me, a golden zone. Oh, golden zone. Oh, lovely. And uh, what's your favorite song? My favorite song? Yeah. You know what? I'm just loving the sun so much. I'm going to actually move this. Yeah. I Hang on. No. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. So my favorite song is um it's a very hard thing to answer very yeah. very hard it is. but i would and, and it's probably like quite a typical answer unfortunately but you know that, that hallelujah song by leonard cohen oh do you know the song it's hallelujah that song yeah and um a lot of people have sung it jeff buckley sung it and but for me, that's the sort of, that's the, the, the kind of textbook version of what I'm trying to do, which is, which is to, it's like a reflection. It's about everything at the same time. You know what I mean? It's not just about this one thing and then I met this girl and she likes me and now I don't like her back anymore. And whatever. It's, it's, it's about existence itself. It's like so, it's so um, hot. You can't follow it, but you know it's true. It's one of those things. You, you know, it's about the unknown. And I think that's what's so powerful about it. You just know it's true, but then you go, what's it about? I don't know, but you know it's true. <laughs> and it's you just feel uses it. such beautiful language to express the, the human experience. Oh, Chris, thank you so much. This is beautiful. And there is a quote here that I want to finish with. And I think it's about many things we've been talking about. Just as ripples is spread out when a single pebble is dropped into water, the actions of individuals can, ha can have far-reaching effects. Mm. Dalai Lama. I think okay. you, you are a very um, good example of that. And You're so... Your positivity is just infectious. No. <laughs> That's your superpower. You already have it. Maybe you have the power I wanted, or at least maybe you hide your worry well. But, oh, uh, maybe I hide, I hide my work. It's the thing that I've been learning. It's like, it's not to think of my worries. Because if I think of my worries, I keep in my worry, and I keep generating worry around me. You just so, let it be. Yeah. So I think, for example, it's not in my worry, but what what do I want, like, so that worry wouldn't happen. So I concentrate on that. So I'm working yeah. with the worry, but not thinking about it, if that makes sense. Exactly, yeah. 
I accept what's happening, let's suppose the situation, which is not the light, which is, would be worrying me. But instead of thinking, oh my God, this is yeah. what I'm going to do. What? Because that just keep me in that place. So and then, then, then it's, you just, that's your life. Your life is giving attention to, to that thing. Yeah. You know? So by a waste of time, by changing my focus, my attention into the other thing, it's, yeah. I, it, it feeds me, it gives me energy and, and. But for me, the creative <laughs> practices the, draw, uh, for you, it might be painting or drawing or making puppets or whatever it might be. For me, it's writing songs. I feel that that's such a nice way of taking all this anxiety here and just channeling it into something positive. And it becomes, you know, you can, you can make something beautiful out of whatever you're feeling. Yes. Chris, it's been wonderful to have you. So good to talk to you more about your life and what you do. Well, it's, it's, you're amazing. So you. thanks, thanks for having me. And maybe we can um, do something in person this year. <laughs> yes, I would love that. Yes, but you're great. So I wish you the best of luck with the show. And it's so, I'm really um, honored to be a part of this episode. And thank you to everyone who's been commenting. Uh, it's just, yeah, I just feel very privileged to be here. So thank you. Thank you. And it's beautiful to have you. And I'm going to put the links out so people can see your show and yes. the other, what you've been up to. Thank you for being as wonderful as you are. And listening thank to my music, you. and it's amazing. You're great. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Bye. Bye-bye.